Hello, and welcome back to Bite-Sized Neo4j for Data Scientists. Today, we're going to continue talking about the data set that we talked about last week, which um, is a Calgal competition for $50,000 on creating a recommendation engine. And obviously, recommendation engines are really nicely done using graphs. Today, we're going to talk about how to model that graph. Um, and we're not even going to do any code. We're just talking modeling today. My name is Claire Sullivan. I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j, and here's how to reach me on the internet. Okay, as a reminder of the important links within our series, the first is how to create a free Neo4j sandbox instance. The second is where you can find all the previous videos in this series, and the last is where you can find all of the code. As a reminder, we were looking at this Kaggle competition um, that HNM put out about personalized fashion recommendations. In part 25, we looked at how you could import that data and create a, a Neo4j database out of it. Um, but if you're interested, go download this uh, this particular data set, um, again, $50,000 up for grabs. Last time in part 25, we had this really basic model where we were looking at customers purchasing articles, and we only had a few properties associated with each of those. Very basic. We're going to make it a little more interesting today, though. And just in case you're curious and you want to be able to draw your own graph models, check out this arrows.app uh, web page. It's what I'm using to make all of these. Okay, if we look at the data files themselves, we have articles, customers, and transactions. Articles and customers are our nodes. Now, I only had a couple properties in, um, in our graph before, but you can see there's tons of them. And um, we're, we're going to actually look at how to create a model out of all of these. Now, um, you can see the data types associated with each um, property, or you know the properties are the columns within the data frames. Um, and we've got properties associated with articles, customers, and then transactions represents our relationship. So it's a customer purchasing an article. But we're actually going to add more relationships today. So let me show you. Here's a little bit more sophisticated uh, um, data or uh, graph model here. And you can see how now I've got many, many, many more properties to each of my nodes and my relationships. That's great. Um, you can certainly model the graph this way. In fact, there's really no right or wrong way to model a graph. Um, I'm going to show you a different way that I've been thinking about modeling this. Um, and like I said, no right or wrong way here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider everything within these properties that is a number um, versus a string. Now, if you think about how we create machine learning models, you know, we do a lot of uh, feature tuning. And when we do that, we, we want our features, uh, our feature engineering, we want our features to be numeric values. Not all, not all of these are numeric values. However, I will give you a slight preview, which is that when we actually get to doing some graph data science on this graph, it will greatly benefit us to keep the properties that are numeric values associated with each of our nodes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of some of these properties with these two nodes, and I'm going to create other types of nodes. For example, okay, this is a bit of an eye chart. Okay, I have my articles right in the middle, um, but let's look at this thing called section. Okay, that's this purple one over here, pinkish purple. Um, I can say that my article has a relationship called in section to this this node called section. Okay, and I have section number associated with that node. I've taken section number out of my article node, so I now have a specific node referring to section. Um, and then the things that are left in um, the, as the properties within my articles are numeric values. This is my way of feature engineering, a preparation prior to us starting to do some actual machine learning on this graph. Okay, I have, I've tried to take each of the nodes and keep, you know, like a name associated with them, just so, you know, as humans, we can look at this and say, okay, that makes sense. Um, and then I've kept a number with them. So for instance, this thing all the way here at the nine o'clock position, that's a node label of product type. Um, type would be the name of that product type. And then product type number is that thing that we're going to do the feature engineering on. Okay, so stay tuned. We're going to get more into this data set as we move a little further within this mini series within a series. I just want to throw another shout out to Grant B. 
Peasley, who's also been creating some blog posts on this. Follow him on Twitter and you can see where his blog blog posts are. His first post shows what his data model was, which is a little different than mine. Um, It's a bit more sophisticated. So um, check that out. And just want to say thank you. Please reach out to me on Twitter if you have any questions or would like to see certain content within this series. Have a great weekend. Bye.